Hi biologists! At the end of this section and following the biology syllabus, you should be able to describe the function of the two angiosperm vascular tissues, xylem and phloem. Draw and identify each tissue type. Distinguish between xylem tracheid cells and xylem vessel cells, phloem sieve tube cells and companion cells. What does this mean? What are we actually trying to learn? Well, you need to be able to describe the function of vascular or transport tissue in a flowering plant or angiosperms. You need to be able to draw and identify each tissue type. You need to be able to distinguish or tell the difference between xylem tracheid cells and xylem vessel cells, between phloem sieve tube cells and companion cells. Let's go. Let's try to understand the organization of the parts of the flowering plant by looking at vascular tissue, in other words, xylem and phloem. An organ is a number of different tissues working together to carry out one or more functions. Remember, an organ is a team of tissues. When we looked at the plant, we studied the shoot system and the root system, and we made the remark that systems are made of organs. So the root system was made up of the organs, stems, leaves, flowers, buds, and the root system was made up of the main root, organ, and the secondary roots. Now we have to understand that organs are made of tissues. Looking at the plant organs, we observed dermal tissue. The function of dermal tissue is protection. You might remember the idea of dermatitis, a dermatologist, coming from the idea of skin. So dermal tissue is like an outside skin. Sometimes it can be called epidermis. Its function, as we have just said, is to protect the plant from microorganisms or pathogens. The second type of tissue we observed was ground tissue. The function of ground tissue is for the storage of food. However, if ground tissue is green, it can carry out photosynthesis. The last tissue we observed was vascular tissue or transport tissue. There are two types of vascular tissue xylem tissue which carries water and minerals and phloem tissue which carries food. Now that we have observed all those tissues in the plant, we now have to remember and look at the idea that tissues are made of cells. Remember the definition. A tissue is a group of similar cells, similar cells carrying out a special function. When we look at tissues in a plant, we hope to see the cells from which they are made. Looking at plant tissues, there are two types. There are simple tissues, which are made up of structurally identical cells working together. An example of a simple tissue is dermal tissue, because it is only made of one type of cell. The second type of tissue that you can see in a plant is complex tissue. Complex tissue is made up of structurally different cells working together. For example, vascular tissue or xylem and phloem. Xylem and phloem are complex tissues. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at xylem and phloem and study the different cells that make up these tissues. Let's have a look at xylem tissue. Xylem tissue is a complex tissue. It is actually made of four different types of cells. 
including the ones that we are interested in, the vessel elements or vessel cells and tracheids. The function of xylem tissue, which is one of the objectives of this lesson, is to transport water and minerals up the plant. Don't forget to mention minerals. They are often forgotten. They are transported, dissolved in the water. The xylem carries the water and the minerals up the plant only in the one direction, from the roots to the leaves. Xylem tissue also gives mechanical support to the plant, meaning that it helps to hold it up. Now let's have a look at some xylem tissue and the cells that make it up. The first thing we have to realize is that the individual cells that make up xylem tissue are called vessel elements. These vessel elements remind me of a can of beans, if you can imagine such a thing. Can you imagine taking a can of beans and taking the lid off it and the base off it so that you're left with just a hollow cylinder? That would be a model for a vessel element. So now, if you take one vessel element, a bottomless bean can, and stack the vessel elements one on top of the other, you will make a xylem pipe or a xylem vessel. Here we can see the remains of the end walls before they break down. The function of a xylem vessel, as we have said already, is to transport water and minerals. The xylem vessel has thick lignin cell walls. Lignin is a material used to make cell walls in xylem. It is stronger than cellulose, which is the normal carbohydrate that is found in cell walls of plants. Now the lignin cell walls are so strong they give mechanical support to the plant, to the stem and help to hold it up. Lignin is laid down in patterns, usually of a spiral shape. The xylem vessels also have pits. These are little holes in the side walls that allow sideways movement of water. Obviously, the xylem vessels are open-ended or they are hollow. They have a hollow lumen which makes it suited to the passage of water. Xylem vessels or the individual vessel elements contain no cytoplasm. So this is a very important point because at maturity, when they are fully grown, xylem cells and xylem vessels are dead cells and dead tissue. What is the description of xylem vessels? That is one of the objectives of this lesson. We have to be able to describe xylem tissue. When we describe xylem tissue or proper advanced xylem vessels, we have to understand it is only found in flowering plants or angiosperms. Vessel elements make up xylem vessels. Vessel elements are the individual cells that make up the tissue. The vessel elements are dead, composed of hollow cells of narrow bore, meaning that the pipe is narrow in diameter. The pipes are continuous. There is no end walls. There is a thick spiral patterned lignin cell wall on each of the xylem elements. Xylem vessels have pits that allow the sideways movement of water as we said already. As a matter of interest, xylem vessels make up the wood in trees and when you burn a log you are actually burning the xylem vessels in a tree stem. What about tracheids? Tracheids are the xylem tissue that is found in conifers 
or evergreen trees like pine. Tracheid tissue or tracheid cells are more primitive than xylem vessels. When we look at the tracheids, we can see that they are made of individual cells that have tapered end walls. The individual cell is pointy at both ends. It reminds me of a pencil that's topped at both ends. These tapered cell walls have pits which allow the passage of water and minerals. So the function of xylem tracheids, which is an objective of this lesson, is to transport water and minerals. The xylem cells here also have thick lignin cell walls and the lignin again is laid down in spiral patterns. The function of the lignin cell walls is to give mechanical support, to give strength to the stems. The tracheids also have pits which allow sideways movement of water. The hollow lumen in the individual cells with the tapered end walls allow passage of water. Don't forget that the tracheid tissue is made up of dead cells. What is the description so of xylem tracheids? Don't forget being able to describe this tissue is one of the objectives of this lesson. So xylem tracheids are primitive. They're only found in coniferous trees trees like pine trees or Christmas trees. Xylem tracheid tissue is made up of long, thin cells. They are dead cells with a hollow lumen. They have tapered end walls. They have thick spiral patterned lignin cell walls. And they have pits, as we've said, to allow sideways movement of water. Looking at a xylem cross-section, we can see the thickened lignin cell wall. We can see the wide diameter inside. I should really say the empty lumen inside because overall the pipes are very narrow. They are of narrow bore or narrow diameter, but they are hollow and have a large empty space inside to allow the passage of water. Now for some added detail, especially those of you able for a bit more. Strictly speaking, this is not on the syllabus. However, this material can be taken from what you had to learn and adapted or interpreted to answer a thinking cap question. The first little piece of added detail is that the narrow pipes or the narrow vessels help capillary action. Capillarity is the tendency of water to rise in narrow pipes anyway. So if the vessels are narrow, then that will help the tendency of the water to rise by capillarity. The narrow vessels also prevent the water columns from breaking. Pits allow the sideways movement of water, another way in which the xylem is adapted to its function. Strong lignin walls, a particularly important point that the exams are very fond of. You must realize that the cell walls are made of lignin. So the strong lignin walls stop the vessels from collapsing. And don't forget the major adaptation of xylem is that there are no end walls in the vessels. There are no cell contents. Don't forget they are dead cells and this will allow water to flow. At the end of the day, you must be able to draw large, clear, well-labeled diagrams of these structures and know the functions of each part. Practice in a jotter. Now that we've reached the end of our lesson, have we achieved our objective? 
Can you describe the function of the two angiosperm vascular tissues, xylem and phloem? Can you draw and identify each tissue type? Can you distinguish between xylem tracheate cells and xylem vessel cells, between phloem, sieve tube cells and companion cells?